Hey everyone, Matt here from Native Instruments, and today we're gonna check out the Creative Effect Byte from the Crush Pack Effect series. Byte combines two techniques in a single plugin, making it possible to add complex textures to the signal or completely deteriorate the sound in many different ways. Recreate the prized sonic imperfections that defined hip hop and dance music's first golden era, or dial the bits right down to depth charged extremes. Byte includes 81 presets that offer the sought after sound of the early digital era and transforms any signal into lo-fi goodness. Let's throw this effect on a few different layers and see what Byte can do. Starting with our drum track, I have a beat made in Ableton using the latest battery kit from Complete Now called the Drast Kit. First, with an instance of Byte on the track, let's just flip through a few presets. You can hear how each one changes the sound in a different way. I'm gonna go to the distortion category, then let's select a preset. This preset already makes my drums knock. Let's see what happens when I adjust the frequency amount. It almost sounds like a low pass filter. When you change this, it actually adjusts the sampling frequency at which the input signal is resampled. I'm going to automate this to start around 300 Hertz and go up to about 26K. This way, my drums are still a bit crunchy when it's fully open, but it gives you the effect of being filtered in with high resonance. Now, let's add Byte to our sub bass preset for Melted Vibes. You can really get some cool tones just by flipping through the presets. Now let's fine tune one. First, let's lower the bit depth. This adjusts the amount of available quantization values by setting the bit depth in a range of two bits to 16 bits. A lesser amount of values results in a more distorted sound. As I lower the bit depth, you can hear how it starts to break up. Let's lower the frequency and turn up the jitter. This adds fluctuations to the sampling rate of the resampling algorithm, basically making the signal noisier. What's cool is the jitter is added to the left and right stereo channels independently, which gives you a super wide stereo image of the added noise. Let's add some saturation and turn down this post filter to remove some of the noise and only let the lower frequencies through. Cool, let's see how this sounds with the drums. This lead is also from the Drast Kit and Battery. I think it's a really cool loop, especially if you trigger it like a sample. Now that you know what a lot of these parameters are, I'm gonna adjust a few of them on the sound itself. You can see as I degrade the signal quality, it starts to almost sound like I'm adding ring modulation or new harmonics to the sound, which is really cool and unique. 
Let's turn up this crunch knob. This provides continuous control over the bit reduction effect. It allows you to smoothly control the resolution without the stepping effect. For instance, if I keep this knob all the way down and change the bit depth, you can hear how it jumps to each value. Whereas if you turn the crunch knob up, it's a less dramatic change, but creates additional distortion. I'm going to turn up the saturation knob to give it some more drive, and let's check out the expand knob. This parameter changes the quantization value of low-end frequencies in the amplitude range. Basically, if you turn it more to the left, it'll quantize the low-end frequencies at a higher resolution, giving you a cleaner sound. Let's lower this to about 60%, and then I'll adjust the pre and post filter to eliminate some of the lower frequencies. Here's what it sounds like in the mix. This next sample is from Battery, and it already sounds pretty cool. I'm just gonna add a preset from Byte to it so it fits the same lo-fi vibe as the rest of the song. Let's play that back with the rest of the tracks. For my final sound here, I have a patch from Lo-Fi Glow called Anachronic. For this sound, I'm gonna start with the preset and make some adjustments from here. First, let's turn up the frequency so it's a bit brighter sounding. You can hear how with the crunch knob all the way up, it's adding an extra tone at the end of each note. This is due to the DC button. When activated, the zero level is removed from the available bit values, effectively sustaining the sound with a buzzing square wave. When deactivated, the output signal fades to silence immediately, like this. I actually like the effect it's giving while it's turned on. Let's turn down the filter just a bit. Okay, last thing to do is play this back. Here's what the track sounded like before adding any instances of bite. And here's what it sounds like after. And that's Byte. Check it out today at nativeinstruments.com or get it as part of the Complete Now bundle. Stay tuned for more plug-in walkthrough videos to see what comes with Complete Now and how you can make most of all the included sounds.